PX unit uh, downflow unit. It's got two circuits uh, with humidifier. It operates on return air. This is your return air sensor. So this measures temperature and humidity. Um, and the set point works through return, not supply. points are adjusted from the controller. This is an MP20 controller uh, made by Corel. This, is your, this is your electrical circuit. So in here you've got your compressor, contactors and overloads. You've got your fan, contactor, and overload. You've got your humidifier, contactor and overload which is isolated at the moment. And you've got your heaters, heater stage in one and two. Which obviously if the temperature gets too low, it will activate the, uh, the heaters. Up here, you've got your pressure differential. These are your time switches. Uh, basically, what happens is uh, for the compressor. No, 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 no. This this is for startup procedures. Okay. So when you when you energize the unit and you call it to run, it will be a certain amount of seconds before it kicks the fan in. Uh, that's to stop the pressure differential kicking out. fan doesn't come in time before the pressure differential wants to read it will just go into airflow alarm okay. yeah. so what got, issues have we got on here at the moment so the issues on this right now is that circuit 2 is running low on charge You've got flashing in the side glass when the unit runs so if we pop that off We'll see bubbles and flashing in there when the circuit's running. It's just shut itself down, but I can prove that to you in a second. Uh, the cover's broken off, as you can see. So yeah, so it makes the compressor unsafe to touch. You've got three phase right there, uh, so this needs to be replaced. It's one of the first things. Um, second thing I found is that the PRVs, you've got pressure relief valves in here. So in here, you've got one PRV per circuit. There's one down there, and there's another one over here for circuit one, which you could probably get a better view of. Just for the audience, PRV stands for pressure, pressure release, release valve. valve. So. And how do they work? They're, they're gauged at pressure. So this, this one's set to 29 bar gauge. Now, if the pressure increases in the system, to over that pressure, it will release all the gas that's in this circuit through this through this opening here. What will happen when that happens? The whole room will fill up with the refrigerant. Um, what's supposed to happen? And oil. Yeah, oil. and oil, obviously. Oil what uh, what's supposed to happen though, from this connection, we're supposed to have a, a copper pipe coming off of here, leading to outside of the building. So that in the event of a HP trip and it lets off through the PRV, it will vent to atmosphere instead of it being contained in the room. Uh, the other thing is that they're out of date as well. These PRVs don't have a date on them, so they're from factory uh, setting. Now if we check the nameplate of the unit, we can see that the, the unit was installed in, uh, in 2004, so the PRVs are well out of date. So that has to be done, one of the first things to be done. Um, humidifier needs replacing. As you can see it's had a lot of wear and use. Yeah. You can see a lot of scale build up. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, I will not be running or testing this for health and safety reasons. We just replace the bottle and start again. Um, I've mentioned this to facilities team on site already and they've spoken to the head of IT and they said that humidity is not really a big issue for them now um, just because of 
server upgrades, like servers don't really take static charge like they used to many yeah. years ago. So um, it's not a big deal. So I think we should still replace the bottle yeah. anyway. Um, and if they want it, it's there. This is circuit two, which is now running, but this circuit is a circuit that has the leak on it. So, telltale signs of leak. Telltale signs of leak. You can see where the oil's starting to rush up through here on the outside of the unit. Blatant marks of oil. Now, if we look underneath the unit, you can see blatant discoloration here and clogging of the actual dirt which indicates there's a major leak somewhere here in this coil so to identify where the leak is and do a possible repair or replacement we need to pull out the remainder of the gas that's in the circuit and then we pressure test the system up to 10 bar of oxygen free nitrogen to try and find the leak and if it is on the coil by the looks of its state it's going to be Car replacement situation. Yeah, it really does. Uh, on this service, I've managed to identify uh, what circuit is which uh, just by literally running a circuit in manual, leaving the other circuit in manual off, and coming up here to see what's running. So I've now labelled this. So this is circuit two of uh, close control unit one. Right, just going back to what we said earlier, yeah. would it be best for us to, just as our initial test point, yep. we can already visibly see there's a leak, mm -hmm. isolate from these valves yep. here, and potentially pressure test, remove our um, fitting here, yep. and um, pressure test from, pressure this test point. from this point here. Yes. 